Hello and welcome to the driver's briefing for the race room truck. Let's start by running through some of the vehicle's performance statistics. It weighs in at 5,300 kilograms, which makes it around four times the weight of most GT3 cars. It's powered by a 12.4 litre six cylinder turbo diesel engine. At peak, it produces 1,100 horsepower at around 1,800 revs per minute. The torque is an astonishing 5,000 newton meters at peak, which is put out from 750 until around 1,500 revs per minute. For safety reasons, top speed is automatically limited to 160 km an hour at all circuits. The race room truck gearbox consists of 16 forward gear ratios and is operated by an H pattern shifter plus two new buttons. Tyres make use of a bespoke racing compound but are still highly durable. The brakes of the race room truck are based on a standard road going braking system. However, water cooling has been added to manage the temperatures. This system can either be controlled by the computer or managed by the driver. Now, let's look at the new key bindings which are essential to use if you want to use the truck in fully manual mode. The first is brake water spray. Binding this will enable the driver to cool the front brakes whenever the button is pressed by spraying water onto them. Beware that the capacity of the water tank is 200 litres. This will give around 35 minutes worth of running which is just slightly longer than a typical race distance. The second binding is a toggle gear range. This toggles your eight shifter positions one to four from giving you either gears one to four or gears five to eight. Typically, gears one to four are only used to get the truck going from stationary, after which the range is toggled to high mode and gears five to six are used for racing. The final binding is toggle gear split. Each gear is selected with the H shifter can be split into two ratios. This is what gives us our total of 16 forward gear ratios as we gain a high and a low gear for each position of the H shifter. This works as a pre-selector, meaning that this can be toggled at any time that the gear won't change until the throttle has been lifted. Okay, so in just a second, we'll go for a drive around the track. But before we do that, I'll just give a few pointers. So I think that one of the very first things you should do is begin with a nice flowing circuit, not one with too many tight turns, because in all honesty, when you've got something that's five and a half tons, the really tight turns are the really tricky ones to master. So somewhere like Donington Park National, which I've got loaded at the minute, is an ideal starting point. I'd also recommend to keep things simple, start off with the gearbox in automatic mode, start off with the water spray in automatic mode, get those things taken care of, and then you can just focus on just the handling characteristics and then once you've mastered those then start to um, take over control of, uh, of those more complicated features but yeah just initially just keep it nice and basic and then build up from there um, because this vehicle really is significantly different to anything else that we've got in game uh, and just in keeping with that that's exactly as I'm driving it at the minute I've just got it in automatic mode and um, the brake water spray is going to be automatic which we'll see in just a second well just a few laps um, but yeah um, so acceleration wise this thing with all its torque really is very very quick um, but the thing you've really got to watch out for is that with all that torque it can spin up the wheels pretty hard uh, but it has got quite a bit of inertia so it's it's fairly controllable once it actually does get sideways I'll give you a bit of a demonstration of that in a minute okay so as you can see Donington Park is a pretty nice place to begin another thing that you've got to watch out for when you've been driving some other cars are the braking distances with this because um, at 5.3 tons it does take quite a bit of slowing down I mean the brakes are very very good um, 
but it doesn't stop like a GT3 car. We'll give you that as a warning. Okay, something else that uh, you need to be watching out for as well is the uh, the steering ratio in this, with it being a truck, is a fairly slow steering ratio. Now, as you can see there on the left side of the screen, that is showing us how much water we've got left in the water spray tank. And uh, if I flick through the screens, you can see the brake temperatures, and that's a really key thing to be keeping an eye on whilst you drive this truck. Okay, and there it goes again. You can see those brake temperatures start to come down as soon as that, that gets activated. You can actually hear the water spraying as well. Now you can see I'm being pretty careful with the accelerator pedal. It will take a few laps of the tyres to get heated up on this. But the grip initially is pretty good. Okay, you see you just have a little bit of bounce at the front end just as you turn in but that's just because the center of gravity is so high in this truck as you would expect okay i'm going to focus on the gearbox for just a second so some of you might well have noticed that there are hardly any gear changes happening and that's for very good reason so with all the torque that we've got and all these nice flowing corners of donnington park we don't need to be shifting down the gears all the time because as demonstrated just then, we've got more than enough power to start to spin up the back wheels. So um, the automatic gear system, the way that it's set up, the way we've got it running in game will really um, give you a really good clue as to which gear you should be in. You see we just dropped down one gear then for the chicane and then we're back up to, back up to top. So it's absolutely not necessary you'll be shifting down a lot of gears because all you'll do is you'll be coming out of the corners backwards because you'll be spinning up the wheels far too easily. So a smooth throttle application you can see the uh, wheels do start to spin up and these gear change lights have been set especially to the optimal gear change point so the engine will rev out to 3000 revs but it does sort of run out of steam fairly high in the rev range so you want to be shifting somewhere about 2200 revs is about the optimal shift point you can find the exact perfect point by just looking at when the last shift light comes on and that's exactly where you want to be changing gear in this truck okay the brake spray doing a really nice job for us there Okay, so as you can see, you just have to take your time a bit with this truck and you can't uh, really force the pace. We've obviously got no downforce at all happening with this and a lot of inertia, a lot of weight behind us. So patience is pretty important. But once the tyres are up to temperature, you really can drive it quite hard. Yeah, you really have to commit to that brake pedal but if you're just a bit too keen on the accelerator it will spin up those wheels coming out of turns okay so there we have it that's all we really need to know about driving the truck to begin with enjoy <laughs> <laughs>